Just yeah. turned yourself off. But I can tell part of it, part of it didn't sound right. Turned yourself back on. I just did. I just did. Be patient, my brother. Be patient. That's not his one. <laughs> not a strong suit, huh? Not a strong suit. When he's in the hospital, he's not a very patient patient. <laughs> uh, before we begin, I, December the 12th will be our end of year business meeting. Do we want to do that in, after our morning service like we had uh, did last time? Or do we want to do it on Sunday night? What's your thoughts? Do it that morning because we're having fellowship that day. And no evening service. On the 12th? No. That's, oh, the, that's, the, fifth. that's the Sunday after the fellowship. Oh, gotcha. I think we ought to have it in the a.m. too. Okay. Yeah. Several of you had mentioned that you liked that. Kenny? Yeah, I just go second. Okay. Got a motion and a second. We'll do our business meeting after our morning service on the 12th. All in favor say yay. 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 All in favor say nay. Yay. Or all opposed say nay. Yay. Okay, we got yay. yay's got it. So yay, we get to have business meeting. <laughs> so hopefully, hopefully God's continuing to bless and things are looking looking better and looking up a little bit. So, all right. Title of today's sermon is Rough Road. I'd asked JL to pick out that trial's dark on every hand. And uh, then he uh, that last song that we picked about a story to tell and how we're going to let Jesus show through us, that fits right in too, brother. So you done you done good listening to the Lord this morning. You done good. So anyway, our, our scriptures in 2 Corinthians chapter 4, verses 7 through 11. And uh, uh, real interesting uh, set of scriptures for us this morning. And I uh, just want to dive right in and let's, let's start on that this morning. This is about the time that I usually am finishing my lunch, starting my nap, so if I doze off here in a minute, you'll know what's going on. <laughs> my body's trained. <laughs> it would have been 12.30, and that's about the time I usually finish my sandwich. Get my chair leaned back, and I turn that remote down real low, just a light little rumble in the background. And Man, I can go snoring like you wouldn't believe for about 30 minutes. So so if I doze off, we'll, we'll be okay. So anyway, uh, First, or 2 Corinthians, excuse me, 2 Corinthians chapter 4, verses 7 through 11. But we have this treasure in earthen vessels, so that the surpassing greatness of the power will be of God and not from ourselves. We are afflicted in every way, but not crushed, perplexed, but not despairing, persecuted, but not forsaken, <laughs> struck down, but not destroyed always carrying about in the body the dying of Jesus so that the life of Jesus also may be manifested in our body. For we who live are constantly being delivered over to death for Jesus' sake so that the life of Jesus also may be manifested in our mortal flesh. Let us pray. <coughs> our most precious Father, Lord God, thank you so much for the beauty of your word, for the power of your word. Lord God, thank you for the blessings and the gifts that you pour out upon us each and every day. And Father God, as we go through life, as we struggle with life, as we deal with all of the things that come our way, Father God, just help us to keep our eyes focused on you. Help us to always look to you for our help and our comfort and our strength. Father, I thank you for each and every person that you have brought here this morning for your purpose, to hear your word. Father, burden our hearts for those lost around us that do not know you, for those that know you but have wandered away and need to be brought back. Father, there are so many around us that need to be here, need to hear your word, need to know <coughs> about you. And Father God, I pray that you will burden our hearts for those people and give us the boldness to go and to speak and to show your love to them, dear Father. Lord God, I beseech you this morning, please help me with your word today. Give me the words to say, Father God, not my own, but yours. Let your spirit fill each and every heart. May your words pour out of me. 
and the words that you want to say to be spoken with your power. Father God, we are very weak in and of ourselves, but we have great strength in you and help us always to see you. We love you. We praise you for our, your blessings. We thank you for your strength and comfort during hard times. I ask all this in your precious name. Amen. 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 This kind of makes it a real simple, easy sermon. Verse 7 is point 1. Verses 8 and 9 are point 2. Verses 10 and 11 are point 3. So, okay, so you can kind of see where we're heading here this morning. First thing I want us to look at, how many of you think you're rich? How many of you would consider yourself rich this morning? You know? Got, got all the money you need. Got the biggest house in town. Got your yacht on the Buffalo Springs Lake over here. <laughs> we're, not, we're not wealthy, are we? We don't consider ourselves to be wealthy, and yet here we have been given a treasure. If we know Christ, we have been given a treasure. Amen. It is God's love, God's mercy, God's grace, God's salvation and his gift of eternal life that we have this treasure now, what do we usually do with the treasure? We take it. We, we put it in a safe place, don't we? We put it in the most secure place we can find, don't we? Uh, why, why do you think that Brother Concy has a job? We drive, he drives an armored truck. He carries a, a gun. He's got armor plating on his truck. He's got bulletproof glass on his uh, truck. We put our our treasures we put in our bank vault or in our safe deposit box or in a safe at home, don't we? We we take our treasures and we put them in the most secure place we can find because we don't want to lose our treasures, do we? We want them safe. There's this place over in Tennessee. It's called Fort Knox, where the U.S. government stores all their gold bullion. And you want to talk about a secure place. This is a secured vault with every kind of machine gun nest, motion detectors, vibration sensors, heat sensors, cameras, armed personnel everywhere. And it sits in the midst of an army base with big tanks, big guns, lots of soldiers with lots of guns. I mean, this is a secure facility because why? We don't want anybody to get the treasure that we have. This is all the gold in the United States that the United States owns, not all the gold in the United States, but what the, United, the, what the U.S. government owns. This is a secure fortress inside a secure army base. I mean, it is safe. In fact, they have not allowed any outside personnel into Fort Knox since 1971. There was a rumor going around that it was actually empty and, and it just kept feeding and feeding and feeding and so the government finally allowed a few reporters in with cameras and they videoed the gold and uh, opened a few of the vaults. I mean, the vault doors are m massive. They're immense and the, no one, no one knows all of the security measures that have been placed around that uh, facility to keep out. And we want to keep it safe. We take a treasure, we put it in the most secure place we can put it. Except it says here that God takes his most precious treasure and puts it inside a clay jar. What do y'all know about clay pottery? It breaks. <laughs> it, it's, it's not real strong, is it? It's not real secure. It's, it's very fragile. You know, when me and Robbie, we loved to go to New Mexico, and for a long, long time, we would drive by, and if, if uh, one of the little knick-knack shops had pottery outside, we didn't stop. 
Because we wasn't going to turn our children loose because we couldn't afford to pay for what all they could tear up. Because, you know, one could push the other and the time it was all said and done, you'd owe several thousand dollars worth of pottery that you'd busted. Because it's very fragile. It's easy to break. And yet, here we are, you and I, we are that clay pot. We are a clay pot. And God has put his treasure. He keeps his treasure inside of us. Now, stop and think about that. God has entrusted us with his greatest treasure, his son, Jesus Christ. And he's put it in the most insecure place that he could put it. Now, why in the world would he do that? Because he is going to be the one that strengthens us, not ourselves. See, all of the clay pots, there's nothing special about a clay pot. They're all made from the very same materials. They're all made in the, basically the same way. They're all pretty much the same. There's nothing special about the pot, is it? It's what's inside the pot that makes it special. Some pots were made for very special you know, ceremonies and things, you know, uh, particularly back in biblical days for, you know, for royalty and for, for their their drink or for storing their, their items in. Others were made for very mundane, very, you know, just to haul a little jug of wheat to the, to the market and pour out or, you know, different things. But there's nothing special about the pot. They're just common, ordinary pots, clay jars. But it's what's inside that clay jar that makes them special. And see, that's what you and I are. There's nothing special about you and me, are they? I, you know, I don't have eight toes. You know, there's, there's nothing about me that makes me special. On the outside, I am what I am. I'm just about $4.38 worth of raw materials is basically what the human mineral count is worth. I've got a treasure that the whole rest of the world is desires to have. I have a treasure hidden deep inside of me. So see, God takes that very special treasure and he hides it in the most weak, fragile, conspicuous place that it could be placed. You know, some of us take and hide our money, un money under the mattress, don't we? How many of you do that? Yeah, I don't think so, you know. But see, why, what does that do? Well, that moves us to our next couple of verses. It reveals God's power, does it not? It's not us that are strong and can contain this great treasure. It's God's power that does it. And see, he allows. We are afflicted in every way, or as some translations put it, we are pressed. We're squeezed. The world squeezes us. The world presses us. But we're not crushed. Have you ever, you, you ever push on a clay pot? What happened? Man, they just, you can just disintegrate them in a heartbeat, can't you? They're not sturdy. They're not strong. They're, they don't take dropping very easily. They're, you know, you knock one down, it's going gonna, it's gonna to shatter. Jars are not, they're not strong. They're very weak. They're very fragile. And yet God puts his treasure inside that so that his power will be revealed in us. Those are delicate, fragile, and easily broken devices. But God places that treasure there so that as this world presses on us, this world crushes on us, this world perplexes us or confuses us as this world tries to knock us down and kick us around. We're not broken. We're not disturbed. We're not confused. We're not damaged because God allows these things to happen to us so that his power will be displayed. How can that pot Manage to hold that because it's not that pot. It's the power of God that's controlling that pot. It's the power of God that is keeping that pot. So when you are having difficult times, when your road gets rough, 
when your life gets hard, when you have trials dark on every hand, it's not because God's mad at you. It's because the world is trying to crush you. The world wants to dispose of this treasure. The world wants to get rid of this treasure. And it's trying to come in on you and it's trying to crush you and it's trying to beat it out of you. But through the strength of God, we can stay strong. God will not allow more to come upon us than what we are able to stand. Mm -hmm. Now, sometimes it may feel like, boy, God, you got close on that one. Well, what does that do to us when we suffer all of these trials, when we suffer these persecutions, when we suffer these heartaches? It strengthens us, does it not? It purifies us. It gets rid of any nastiness that's inside of us and it cleanses us and it purifies us. And it strengthens us to be better able to serve God. An athlete doesn't just show up on Friday night and try to play the ball game. They work all week long and they condition themselves and they, they do workouts until, you know, my coach used to run us and say, we ain't going in until y'all throw it up. Mm. And that was what we done. You know, it, it got to be, we're, you know, I'll help you throw up if you'll help me throw up. You know, we won't. But the coach would always push us. That's what God is doing. He's pushing us. He's trying us. He's preparing us and curing us and purifying us. What happens when you squeeze something? All of the, the goo runs out of it, doesn't it? Mm -hmm. You know, when we wring out a towel or we wring out your mop, you're squeezing out all the stuff that you don't need. And just leaving what you do need. And that's what God is doing to us during all these very difficult times. God is with us. God is protecting us. We may wonder why. You know, if this treasure, this gift is so special and so treasured, why doesn't God just set us aside? And protect us from all of that stuff so that none of that stuff happens to us. How are you going to get any better? How are you going to appreciate what God has done for you? How are you going to see the strength of God better yet? How is the world going to see the strength of God? Because it's not about me and you, is it? It's about the world seeing God through you and I. We are to be displaying God. A couple of quick verses for you. Isaiah 40, verses 29 through 31. He gives strength to the weary. To him who lacks might, he increases power. Though youths grow weary and tired and vigorous young men stumble badly, yet those who wait for the Lord will gain new strength. They will mount up with wings like eagles. They will run and not get tired. They will walk and not become weary. God is conditioning us. God is preparing us. God is strengthening us for even more battles to come our way. Again, over in uh, 2 Corinthians chapter 12, verses 9 and 10, and he has said to me, my grace is sufficient for you, for power is perfected in weakness. Most gladly, therefore, I will rather boast about my weaknesses so that the power of Christ may dwell in me. Therefore, I am well content with weaknesses, with insults, with distresses, with persecutions, and with difficulties. For Christ's sake, for when I am weak, then I am strong. See, when we recognize our weaknesses, when we realize that we cannot do this on our own. It is not in our own strength that we protect the treasure that God has given us. It is the strength of God that allows us to protect that treasure. And so we are now displaying the power of God and not we ourselves. It's not about me and you. It's all about God. So our strength comes only from God and our weaknesses display his power. And there's a reason and a purpose for that. Because see, Paul kind of changes his 
analogy here just a little bit in verses 10 and 11. He's no longer referring to us holding this treasure, but what does he say? That the death of Christ lives within our body. Well, what in the world does that mean? That means that you and I, if we know Christ, we are ever presently reminded of the suffering, of the pain, of the anguish, of the humility that Christ suffered for your benefit and for my benefit. We are constantly reminded. That, and so when we see the persecutions that we are receiving, when we see the distresses that we are receiving and we can look and see what Christ went through for our behalf, we recognize that we haven't suffered as much as we can suffer, that we are able to withstand more than what we're withstanding. We can take the pressures that the world is putting upon us because we carry within us that imagery, that, that knowledge of Christ and what he has endured for you and for me. Not what we have endured for ourselves, not the strength that we carry, but what Christ did for us. And when we compare what we've gone through, how many of you have suffered as much as Jesus has? How many of you have been humiliated to the point that Jesus was humiliated? How many of you have been lashed 39 times with a cat of nine tails? How many of you have been spat upon for being a Christian? How many of you have been called ugly names for being a Christian. We have not yet begun to suffer for the sake of Christ as much as he suffered for our sake. See, we carry that death around within us. Why? So that our life mimics and imitates Christ and shows Christ. See, our bodies, our life it's like the old, the old movie projectors. Now, I don't understand how all this new digital stuff works and all this kind of stuff. They got some big disc and they put it on and push a button and pictures come up on the wall. But in the good old days, back in the good old days, you know, when they had the eight millimeters and the 16 millimeters and, you know, had to drive in the picture show. You used to have a drive in there in the Mesa. Boy, it was great. They had cellophane film, you know, and it's on, come on a big roll. Now, you can look at that cellophane film and there's, there's images there, there's stuff there, and you, you can kind of look at it, but it really, it's really difficult to see, wasn't it? You know, you couldn't, you couldn't really follow the movie by trying to eyeball through that cellophane film, but you take that film and you run it through that projector and you let that bright light shine through that film and through that lens and up onto the wall, all oh, the grandeur and the glory and the panorama of that Images of that movie were spellbinding, weren't they? I can still remember sitting in a theater watching the Ten Commandments with Charlton Heston. That's showing my age a little bit, y'all. But that film would run through. And that film was kind of worthless, wasn't it? Without that light shining through it. That's kind of the way you and I are. We are the image of Christ. We are the, the picture of Christ to the world, but the world can't see Christ unless the light of Christ is shining through us from within us. Amen. We need to have him projecting through us so that we can demonstrate to the world who Christ is. But it's not through our strength and through our might. It is through the power of Christ, through his light. He is the light of the world and he shines for all the world to see him, but he shines through you and I. You know that, if you remember back in the good old days again, some of y'all are too young, I know, but you remember that film was, was pretty fragile, wasn't it? It would be playing and it'd break or it would water or it would not. It was fragile and sometimes it would get a little stain on it or get a little murky you know, look to it. And you, the picture would be distorted and you couldn't see it real well and it detracted from that movie. And so that's what God is doing with these rough patches in our life, these rough roads that we travel down, this pressing, this being knocked down, all of these persecutions that we are 
going through are to cleanse us and purify us, to keep that film clean so that the picture of Christ that is portrayed is pure and crisp and spellbinding and awe-inspiring. You see, we got to get up. we got to get out. we got to go show the picture of Christ. Because see, the way that we stay clean is we must die to ourselves. We are constantly dying. And in uh, Luke chapter 9, verses 20, verse 23, it says, If anyone wishes to come after me, he must deny himself and take up his cross daily and follow me. See what it says to take up his cross? That cross is the symbol of death, is it not? Of horrifying death. And we are to die to ourselves so that we may be cleansed of all of the murkiness and all of the impurities and all of the, the, the smudges in our life so that the picture of Christ that we illuminate to this world with Christ shining through us is pure and clean and crisp and clear and it spellbinds people and they see what Christ truly is and it's a true picture, it's not a murky picture and they are drawn to Christ and they want to see Christ just as we have and they want part of what we have. We are to be that film. We carry images of Christ on us, do we not? We're a small portion of a great movie on the life of Christ. And each one of us are to display our portion of that movie Amen. to show the world who Christ is and what Christ has done. Are you, are you a crisp and clear film this morning? Are you allowing Christ to shine through you have the, the trials and the tribulations, have the persecutions of your life. Have they cleansed you and purified you? Have you traveled down that rough road and you've grabbed and whined and complained or you've actually been thankful to God for the weaknesses that you have? Are you letting Christ shine to a lost and dying world so that they can see and they can know and they can Do we need to get right with Christ this morning? Do we need to turn the light on on that movie projector? Do we need to change our attitude about the sufferings that we go through? To see God's doing us something very special. Greatest treasure of the world. And we need to be giving that. We need to be showing that to the people. Because there is a huge lost and dying world out there. What they do with it is their business, but we are called to go and tell. Amen. Would you stand with me, please? This Our most gracious Father, Lord God, I thank you today that you think enough of us to use us, Lord God. We are so weak. We are so fragile. We are so imperfect. But God, you don't leave us as we are. You purify us. You cleanse us. You strengthen us. And Father God, we pray that the image of you that we display to the world will draw people to you. Father, it is rough. It is hard being a Christian. You never said, told us that it would be easy. Father, it is a rough road that we travel, but it is so very worth it, Father God as we bounce down this road, that we reach out and we draw others closer to you, Father. That is our purpose. That's what you have created this morning. Father, if there's anyone this morning that has not let your light shine through them, that has not allowed you to, to shine, they're not giving a good picture, Father God, help them to this morning determine to be obedient to you and to follow you, dear Father. Lord God, we yell for this time to you, for you to work in people's hearts and lives. In your name I pray. Amen. Amen. God is speaking to your heart this morning. Would you come now as we sing? There is.